Imagine a world of absolute trust, one in which you can trust the person sitting to your left, the person sitting to your right, and even the person sitting halfway across the planet. Unfortunately, this is not that world. In fact, our society functions largely because we do not trust one another. We regulate our food and our pharmaceuticals because we think we will be taken advantage of by those working in favor of their own personal gain. We distrust strangers because we think in terms of their worst possible motives. People cannot trust other people, but perhaps people can trust a system. This system that I'm referring to is the revolutionary technology known as the blockchain, and it carries the potential to place every digitalized piece of information ever recorded about you at your fingertips, secured completely and displayed at your discretion. We can start to understand the blockchain by first understanding what makes it unique. Its manageability, its visibility, and its security. So let's first imagine we have a filing cabinet. But instead of paper files, this filing cabinet is made up of briefcases. There is a network of people, each of whom have their own copy of the filing cabinet and all the briefcases. Um, whenever information is added, everyone's copy is updated to match. In order to add information to a, to a briefcase, the briefcase must first be opened. And in order to open a briefcase, we must have the key needed to unlock it. Briefcases just don't go around unlocked, waiting for someone to open them. Rather, they are secured with a lock and key system. Our briefcases here are no exception, of course. Additionally, once information is added to a briefcase, it cannot be taken out by anyone, ever. Now, Let's imagine there is a restaurant. The restaurant is run by person A, who wants to rent a building that the restaurant will go into from person B. After some negotiation, a document is drawn up citing the monthly payments. The document is reviewed. Once it is deemed valid, it is added to a briefcase that only person A and person B have the key to unlock. Everyone else just sees the briefcase. Even if person C comes along looking for that information, they will be unable to access it because they do not have the key that person A and person B have. What I just described was how digital records get added to the blockchain. The briefcases represent blocks on the blockchain. Each block holds information that designated people can see. Additionally, each block holds information about the block in front of it. This means that by looking at a single block, you will know the identity of the following one. In our briefcase example, perhaps each briefcase has the serial number of the one next to it carved into its front. This system does not allow for the removal of any briefcases because removing one will disrupt the entire series. This quality of not being able to remove things is referred to as immutability. So, our filing cabinet links these briefcases in a chain of information. The blockchain does the same, only in a digitalized world. Connectivity doesn't just describe the relationship that the blocks have with one another the users on the network are also connected. The community that the blockchain creates functions as a decentralized or peer-to-peer -peer network. In a centralized network, there is a single entity that holds all of the power or information in the system. In a decentralized network, such as the blockchain, however, this information is distributed over a number of different locations. Every user on the network has their own copy of the blockchain that looks the exact same as it does on all of the other computers, also called nodes, on the network. 
Whenever information is added, never taken away, a new copy of the blockchain is passed to all of the nodes. This means that all nodes can see the presence of all information. Going back to our briefcase example, everyone can look into their own filing cabinet and know that the briefcases are there. But they cannot open them and access the documents inside unless they are directly involved and therefore have a key. If everyone can see everyone else's briefcases, it seems unlikely that this is the secure system that we've been looking for. However, it is exactly because of this transparency that the blockchain is so secure. Which brings me to security. Since every node has their own copy of the blockchain, if someone tries to change any existing documents, they're only changing their own copy. One copy, different from the other 50,000, 1 million, or however many nodes are on the network, will alert algorithms built into the system and promptly be corrected. To change the blockchain's history, you would have to change a majority of the copies so that what you are trying to edit agrees with the majority of the system. This means hacking into at least 51% of all of the computers on the network, all at once, in between the time it takes to add a new block. This is not feasible. This part of the blockchain security that guarantees its immutability is only half of the equation. The other half is related to a type of code writing and code breaking called cryptography. This makes it so the briefcases are locked. The nodes that see information know what comes from whom, but they can't actually understand it. A series of passwords authorize interactions so that participants of the passing of information are the only ones that can see that information. To everyone else, this appears as a series of seemingly arbitrary letters and numbers. Without the special passwords or keys needed to unlock the briefcases, attempting to guess these strings of characters would take lifetimes, even with all of the computing power in the world. So, the blockchain is an incredible tool, and unsurprisingly, it has many different applications. One you might recognize, Bitcoin. Ah, yes the volatile cryptocurrency that recently has been shaking the economy and making appearances in memes. The blockchain was first introduced as the data structure behind Bitcoin in 2009 by a programmer behind the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoin's blockchain stores records of transactions that have occurred between users. One thing that makes people want to use Bitcoin is the fact that it has no central authority, like a bank or a co corporation, for example. Instead, Bitcoin is decentralized because it, it implements the blockchain. For many, centralized power screams corruption, so Bitcoin is a welcome alternative. Another financial application can be found in the remittance industry. A remittance is any sum of money sent by a foreign worker to their families back home. Often, these are not huge sums of money. However, with the current system, processing fees add massive expenses. With the implementation of the blockchain, these fees would be negligible. There are a number of startup companies that offer the service to convert one currency to another and use the blockchain in between. These companies have not caught on to the mainstream yet, but they give us hope as to what a future with blockchain remittance would look like. Healthcare, as an industry, is, is constantly trying to improve patient accessibility and privacy. The blockchain, as it turns out, offers both of these things. 
For one, it could be used as a massive database for every patient's records. Each time someone went to the doctor, they could grant their doctor permission to access every test, result, or condition ever recorded about them, or just what's relevant to the appointment. Seeing a cardiologist and then an orthopedic surgeon would be easy, both for the patient and the specialist. Ease in appointments would make for less time spent on each patient, which means doctors could see more patients in a day, help more people get better, and save more lives, all because of the blockchain. Privacy is a very important part of healthcare, so it makes sense that these sensitive documents should be stored on as secure of a system as possible. And it's not just for people, either. The blockchain can be used to track medical technology and pharmaceuticals as they go through each point in the distribution process. Medicine could be tracked at each point via the blockchain. This would prevent pharmaceuticals that are not real from making their way into the supply chain. Additionally, companies would be able to provide verification documents to their customers without risking sharing sensitive corporate inf information. This is a win-win for both the patients and the companies, because the patients will be able to trust the companies and, and therefore will give them more business. So, it seems the blockchain has many practical applications in industries we interact with in our everyday lives. However, there are more luxurious uses of the blockchain. A London-based company called Everledger is working to digitalize all information about individual diamonds. This includes color, shape, weight, measurements, and origin, all combined to form what they call a digital thumbprint. The diamond industry is constantly working on dealing with counterfeit diamonds, just as the healthcare industry is working on dealing with counterfeit pharmaceuticals. Implementing the blockchain would prevent these counterfeit diamonds, or those that were mined in war zones, from making their way into the supply chain. Again, the industry implements the blockchain. Again, the blockchain improves the industry. So, in a world of distrust, what can the blockchain do? Well, there really is no limit to what it can do. We've understood how the blockchain functions. Its public functionality allows us to trust that whatever information we're passing through it will go where we want it to go. Its visible nature allows for our information to be verified, and cryptography allows for that information to be secured. A shift to where we would rely on the blockchain would completely dis disrupt the way we transfer information, and not just how we interact with money. Almost all industries have countless documents, whether it be the remittance industry, the healthcare industry, or the diamond industry. Introducing these, these industries to the blockchain could allow for easy access. It could allow for easy verification. It could allow for trust. So when we can't trust one another, we can trust the blockchain. The world's industries are ready to adopt the blockchain. Are you? Thank you.